Oh, y'all are so cute. You were watching a boring college football game last night? No worries. There was fun basketball being played and we watched it all. Let's run it back now. Run it up, to run it back. Yeah. Run it up, to run it back. Run it back. Run it up. Good Tuesday morning and welcome to Run It's Back. I would like to introduce the esteemed panel. I was going to say of judges, but what are we judging? Besides everything, uh, Sham Sharania, Stadium Insider, joining us from his beautiful little office lair. Uh, Chandler Parsons from a very stark and almost serial killer-like blank room. And Eddie Gonzalez <laughs> on the end there, killing it. <laughs> what Chandler, I know you're in a new house, but we got, put a poster up. Something. It's freaking me out. <laughs> I, it's my second night ever here, Michelle. Give me a break. <laughs> I know. It's, it's pretty. I'll hold up a, hold up a newspaper. Send yeah, send him something. <laughs> I'll send you something. Uh, we got to get things started right away because Nuggets. Oh, the Nuggets. Oh, Jamal Murray. How about 34 points for him? Big win over the Lakers. Ah, big. A win over the Lakers. Jokic with 14, 11, and 16. LeBron sat that one out with ankle soreness. Look. Jokic only needed five field goal attempts last night to earn that triple double. They're tied for the best record in the West. Uh, and the West is obviously a flip flopping up for grabs thing right now. But are they the best team in the West, despite what it might say? You know what, Chandler? Let's start with you. Uh, it's tough because, like you just said, it, it kind of switches every single day and, and switches weekly with this Western Conference. It's so jumbled up and. It just seems like the Nuggets are the most mature and consistent team right now, but they're only going to go as far as their defense. And they had good guard defensive players like Bruce Brown, like Colbo Pope, but it's going to come down to that. We all know how special Jokic is offensively. Um, last night, I don't know if I've ever seen a guy play that well, taking five shots, perfect from the field, perfect from the free throw line, perfect from the three point line. Um, the guy is just a next level unselfish star who cares about nothing besides winning and helping his team win. Um, and then you see a guy like Jamal Murray who's starting to slowly get his legs back. Um, and he had a big game last night. I love that he took 29 shots. That is a huge sign for him to kind of start feeling it, getting his legs into it uh, and becoming that second best player on a contending team. And uh, again, it's, it's, it's kind of all chaos right now. And every week I feel like there's a different MVP and a different team in the West, but right now, I, yeah, I like them as the best. I trust them a little bit more than new Orleans and Memphis in a playoff series. Uh, and it's hard to bet against Jokic right now. Let's let's be honest, guys. They beat the Lakers without LeBron, without AD, at home. Uh, shout out to Jamal. Great game. 29 shots, like you said. He took care of business. If you look at some of those clips, those shots are wide open. The Lakers were not there trying to compete. This was never a close game. It, they made it closer later in garbage time, but it was just like everybody was going through the motions. Are the Nuggets the best team in the in the Western Conference? I mean, I guess they're tied with the Grizzlies right now. The Grizzlies have won eight straight, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, the Warriors are still making it happen without Steph Curry. They got comp out there. And I'm going to sound like a broken record until they prove me wrong. But as long as we can run Jamal Murray and Nikola right. Jokic in the pick and roll in the playoffs, I'm going to feel strongly about about three, four other teams about against them in a series. I've seen this movie before. Congrats to them for the regular season. It's probably going to be a third straight MVP if he keeps this up. But, yeah, it's only so excited I can get about this team. So a couple things. One, this is like the perfect game for LeBron James to sit in terms of, like, the, the home game for Denver. I don't know if there's a, a, as much of a, a, a for sure win in the league right now. Like, the, the Nuggets bring it at home, uh, and, and that was going to be probably an L regardless of whether LeBron James played or not last night. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to go the other way with Eddie. I saw this, and, and I might be biased. I saw this Nuggets team in the bubble. I saw the way Jamal Murray played down there. I saw the way Nikola Jokic played. They made it all the way to the Western Conference Finals. They stung everyone. Everyone that year was hoping for Lakers, Clippers, and they get there. And I think once they got Aaron Gordon, who's basically played like at an all-star level, uh, I, I think this team was really on the cusp. And now you're starting to see them put things together. Jamal Murray's healthy. Um, I, I'm, I'm on the bandwagon. Now, I don't know if they can get by Golden State and some of the other elites for sure, but they're, they're right there to me. And I think what Jamal Murray, what he's capable of, gives me that assurance. Yeah, and at the same point, I feel like there's a lot of teams in the West right now, like Phoenix, like the Clippers, like the Nuggets, where if they get healthy and they can hit that stride at the, at the right point, there's not a clear-cut favorite to me. And, and to 
Clippers. New Orleans is fun. Memphis is fun. They're so young. That I, I don't think they're the clear-cut favorite. Like, if I had to pick one team out of the West right now to come out, I, I would probably go the Nuggets. And do I think they're going to dominate and they're a clear-cut favorite? Uh, no way, but I, I like what they're doing. I like how Aaron Gordon is playing. I like Michael Porter back in the lineup, and I just think they're going to continue to get better. And, and again, defensively, is there's huge holes there that they're going to have to fill to, to even have a chance. But it, it's so competitive and it's so even there. You could go with any team. That's the, I think that's why this season's so fun. I, I couldn't pick who's coming out of the West. I wouldn't even begin to try at this point. But Shams, on the other side of things, uh, you had reported that AD was going to miss a month maybe probably more we're about to hit that four week mark do you have any updates so he's going to try to progress over these next few weeks i mean a return isn't really imminent i think a lot of it is going to depend on how he rehabs how he feels over the next two three weeks and see if he can make it back at some point later this month before the all-star break uh, but this is a guy that's dealing with a bone spur fracture as well as a stress reaction in his navicular bone that's you know that navicular bone is very central to a lot of things you've seen players in the past deal with stress reactions stress, stress fractures in that navicular bone uh, so they're going to be cautious and make sure for the long term he stays healthy uh, but i still think we're several you know a couple two three weeks four weeks away from potentially seeing anthony davis make a, a return uh, but again it is a good sign he is feeling better the pain is subsiding but without anthony davis and, and knowing exactly when he's going to be back there's a lot up in the air for these lakers for sure you want to Google navicular, Chandler? Uh, we can. We can sit here. And, it's like a band name, navicular. Chandler might know about it, honestly. <laughs> Chandler knows yeah, every, every and, human and body part. So Yeah, and especially <laughs> with his, his past of medical, they're not going to rush this back. And where they're going with their season, I don't blame him. He's kind of their only piece moving forward. Uh, <laughs> And, and you see, you see Ham saying, "Well, I, am I willing to put an update on it after the game?" And, and he says, "No." So that just tells you right there, it, it's not going to be anytime soon, and this team is going to continue to struggle. And I mean, last night you look at that roster again. Darvin Ham saying, "After I'm just proud of the way and kudos to the way these guys played. They played hard, and and they said something like." They they tried as hard as they could until they couldn't anymore or something. I'm like, that's that's not that's not how you should be talking about your team uh, after a loss. But yeah, they're in complete disarray. And and if I'm AD and I'm watching things like last night, I'm not rushing back. Heck no, I'm guys, just gonna I, sit in my sweet guys. Clothes. I'm typing. Uh -oh. I'm typing the tweet now. Uh, Sham <laughs> says AD's return not imminent. I'm gonna beat him to this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you allowed to do that contractually? I feel like Don't we're all going to get fired. Don't do me like that. Don't do me like that. <laughs> Laker fans enough. will be on me for sure. They don't want uh, the <laughs> You know what? The, the Knicks uh, had a nice little four-game win streak, but buzzkill. It's over. Bucks erasing a 17-point second-half deficit. They snap it. 111-107. Giannis, 22 points. Joe Ingles, a season-high 17. And remind everybody, he missed the first 29 games of the season, so he seems okay. Um, confidence level in the Bucks. It's, oh, Eddie, I want to start with you. I feel like you and I feel the same about the Bucks, And it's just to say that uh, it's like a meh for both of us. How do you feel about this yeah. Bucks team right now? Yeah, I mean, you know what you get with the Bucks. This is a title team. We've watched them win a title two years ago. We know that Giannis is one of the best players in the world. None of this is surprising. This is actually a really great game. And, and I understand when people say, you know, the, the league is better when the Knicks are better and the Garden is lit up like this. But it's also a very Knicks game. They blew the lead late. And Drew Holiday showed why he's a champion. And this is kind of what makes them so dangerous. You have somebody like Drew Holiday who had a rough game, <laughs> making three – Banking threes off the backboard and just looking crazy and hits two big threes late, steps up on defense. I mean, the, the continuity with this team will be huge for them. And if they do make one of these trades that Sham says that they're in all of these conversations and they improve a little bit on the wings and on the fringes of their roster and get Chris Middleton back, they're as dangerous as any team in the league. Shams. Oh, I thought that were, yeah. Are you going to Bucks Heat Thursday? Is that the, is that the plan? I, 
I am. I'll be at the game. And I, what I'm really looking forward to is potentially the return of Chris Middleton. You know, from what I'm told, he's going to be back here sooner rather than later. Uh, he's missed the last several weeks. And I think there's been a lot of confusion as to why. I'm told he's been dealing with irritation in that knee. It, it sprouted up uh, really shortly after he made his return. Um, and, and, and thankfully for Chris Middleton, for the Bucks, it has subsided. And I, I, he's doing more on the court, taking on contact. And I think he is really nearing and on the cusp of a potential return. But clearly when he was playing, he just was not right, shooting 32.5% from the field in his seven games when he made his return uh, this season. So it's going to be very important to get him back in the lineup. They're on a four-game road trip that ends on the 14th. Getting him back, playing at a high level, this team, this organization really believed that they had Chris Middleton last year. They were going to make it to the finals. They were going to win back-to-back championships. Didn't happen. Uh, so getting a Chris Middleton healthy back is a contract year for him potentially. Uh, I think it'll be very interesting to see when he's back and how he performs when he's back. No pressure on Chris Middleton. Everything depends on you. Don't worry. Uh, on the Knicks side of things, we know how Tibbs likes to coach his teams, but here's the deal. Jalen Brunson with a career high of 44 points, but that's not really the focus right here. The Knicks starters accounted for 80% of the total minutes played last night, Chandler. It, is this a sustainable way to do things? Uh, I don't think so, but this is just a classic Tibbs kind of putting his foot down and, and he's playing five, six, seven guys that at least try to defend. You know, Cam Reddish is out of the rotation, Fournier is out of the rotation. Uh, you know, guys that don't really give the effort and, and kind of multiple efforts like like Tibbs likes. He's he's cracking down, he's shortening up, and, and this is a heck of a game from Jalen Brunson. You know, the guy has 44, 7, 4. We're getting numb to these stat lines, but you know, <laughs> That's such a good signing, and he's such a solid piece going forward. And, look, are the Knicks a contender this year? No, I think so many teams in the East made that jump. There's so many talented teams. And, again, like the West, it's jumbled up, but the top is heavy. Like, there are four or five good teams where I wouldn't be surprised if they got out with Philly, Brooklyn, Boston, Milwaukee, and Cleveland. They could all win the East. So, it's tough, and and the Knicks are kind of in that second, third tier, but – I would think you'd start playing the bench a little bit. I, you know, the, these type of minutes this early to kind of just be banging around for a 7-8 seed, I don't think is a recipe for success, but who knows? I mean, I loved Cam Reddish in, in Atlanta. I think he's super talented, but a young guy like that does a lot of frustrating things on the court that Tibbs just won't stand for, clearly. <laughs> Yeah, look, this is a promising game for the Knicks. I know they lost, and they lost kind of frustratingly at the end, but Jalen Brunson was going shot for shot with them late. He obviously had the big game, 50, 40, 100 from the field for the game. Uh, they, they showed what they could be. I think Julius Randle, you'd want a little bit better game from him. He shot 9 of 29. I know he finished with 25 points, but it was a rough 25 points. And I'm with Chandler. They, they kind of need to find places in the rotation for some of these guys. I know as the organization, it has to be frustrating. They went out and got Cam Reddish last year at the deadline. They gave up. They didn't give up a lot for him, but clearly they had ideas of him playing for this team at some point. And, yeah, Tom Thibodeau, I mean, he has the power there to decide no, and he hasn't. And, and, mm-hmm. But they do need some depth on the wings to help them in games like this. I love Jalen Brunson, but he still is 5'10", and he's still going to struggle in certain matchups, and he's going to need help on, on the wings, and they're just not getting that right now. But here's the thing. We, we all, I mean, Tibbs hangs his hat on defense, this, defense, that. That is the mantra. It's, that's the most important thing to him. But you gave up a 17-point second-half lead. Like, I, that's what I don't understand is – Throw away how much time everybody played. But Chandler, the fact that you do that, and it's not the first time we've seen the Knicks give up a pretty decent lead in one of these games. I mean, they did it San Antonio not that long ago. So that's got to be worrisome too, right? Not just the way he's using his bench or not using it, but the defense didn't seem to be there either. That can't just be fatigue or can it? Yeah, it, it could have a big factor into it. Obviously, when a team goes on a run like that, it's it's on him to kind of make the proper substitutions. It's on him to call the, the timeouts to kind of stop the bleeding a little bit. And, and yeah, these guys look like Cam, Fournier, Obi Toppin, these guys that aren't playing, listen, they're not going to blow the game by just giving them, you know, four to six minute stints to give these starters breathers, especially with RJ Barrett out last night, you're still not finding five minutes for, for Cam or for any of these other guys that aren't, aren't getting any burn at all. Uh, it, it seems tough. And listen, it's a long game. And playing against Milwaukee, the way they defend, the way they move around, that is exhausting. And I, I think for them to 
kind of have more success here and stay in the thick of it there, they're going to have to go deeper. They're going to have to play more guys. And it's not like they have this all time great starting five either. So it's, I would start kind of working those guys in, but this is Tibbs MO. This is what he does. I like that. I like that tweet. Um, all right. We're going to move on to a little Boston, a little Chicago, the Celtics. Oh, they're hot again. They're, they're just, yeah. Beating the Bulls, 107-99. Tatum with 32. Levine, how about Zach Levine? 15 of his 27 points came in the fourth quarter. Obviously not enough, however. But it, it was not that long ago, Shams, that you reported about this disconnect in the Chicago locker room. They've won eight of their 12 since that report. We got about 30 days till the trade deadline. Are things better? Is this just a Band-Aid? What can we expect? Well, I'm told this concept of them blowing it up, that's just not in their mindset right now, isn't really a likely proposition. This is a team, an organization that does want to compete for the playoffs, com compete to, to potentially make it past the first round, not really toil in the lottery. Night. And I think if you look at the roster that Arturis Kornishevitz has put together, Lonzo Ball, yes, he's out. But DeMar DeRozan, Zach Levine, Nikola Vucevic, they've got some level of talent on the bench. This is a team that has the talent. And so for them, it's a lot internally and figuring it out, uh, you know, in-house and seeing how they can improve. And uh, unless there's a deal of the magnitude of a DeJounte Murray, a Rudy Gobert package that comes together where you have to listen, that's just not an area that they want to go when it comes to like moving a guy like Zach Levine for two first round picks with the Lakers or whoever else might drop one or two first round picks to them. Uh, they want to compete. Yes, there are issues that they have to sort out, but you're seeing some level of progress being made right now. Yeah, they're, they're playing much better. I, I just still think, and could they get into the playoffs and could they make some noise and possibly win a series? Sure, they're so talented with those wings. I think they're missing Lonzo Ball majorly just, you know, as that floor leader, that point guard to kind of initiate everything. But I've kind of circled Chicago as this team from the beginning where if they didn't get off to a hot start, I think they're in blow up territory. They have a lot of trade assets. They have a lot of guys on that roster that I would want, you know, if I was another opposing GM, uh, they don't get their pick this year. It's going to Orlando, I think. So I don't see them competing this year. Everyone around the East has made so much progress and the bulls are kind of just there stagnant. Uh, I would do the, I would, I would look for the, to make a trade and to make a splash and kind of get this thing moving in another direction. Eddie, does the pup have anything they want to add on the bull side, or do you want to go Celtics? Well, the <laughs> the Bulls played ten guys, fourteen minutes or more last night. That this is clearly a team that cannot decide who their best seven <laughs> players are. So it makes sense if they can get some addition by subtraction. But I think the idea, like Shams mentioned, of them trading away their stars and just like you know giving somebody to the Lakers or whatever, <laughs> I, I don't understand that. I don't see that happening. I'm with Chandler. If they get Lonzo Ball, that can help place that a lot of things. But we've heard nothing about Lonzo. We, we, we know nothing about what it is. And he's coming off a major knee injury when he comes back. So how much can you realistically expect when he does come back? Even at full strength, even in their happiest of days, there's still a tier or two behind the best teams in the East with the juggernauts that they have out there. Last night was a really good example. They kind of played it tough, but it took some amazing shots from Zach Levine late. And then they end up losing off of Zach trying to make more of those shots late. And so it, it just, you know, they were outclassed by a better team on the road, like you would expect. And, yes, they've won more of their games as of late, and that's great. But they are also starting from about as low as they could get and, and have improved on that. So, you know, th are they the playoff team? Yes. Are they a title contender? I, I don't see that no matter what they do and add, whether it's Lonzo Ball, whether it's, I don't know, John Collins or whoever the other guys are that are available in the league, they're going to be this, the, the, you know, they'll top out at, you know, maybe win a round one series against the right team, but that's it for them. There's your John Collins drinking game mention. Anytime John Collins is mentioned as possibly being <laughs> traded. Bottoms up, ladies and gentlemen. So the Celtics, uh, that is, they are the, one of the juggernauts, if not the juggernaut in the East right now. They've won three straight seven of their last 10. Chandler, I know you love to make predictions, but are you taking them or would you rather have the field at this point? Oof, that's, I mean, <laughs> I would, 
I would take the field just because I also love Brooklyn. I love Milwaukee. I love Cleveland and I love Philly. Do I think Boston's the best team right now? Yes. I think they have the best defense. I think they have the best duo. I think they're deep. I think they have so many versatile players that can defend and switch and play the right way. Uh, I think they're very well coached, uh, but the field is tough because what Brooklyn's doing, um, we all know Milwaukee. People don't talk about Cleveland enough. They're such a young, young, fun, exciting team. Uh, and Philly's only getting better with the healthier they get. So I would take the field, but I do. If, if I had to pick one team to come out of the East, it would, it would be Boston. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm with Taylor. Like that was I mean, the question. This is pretty much... <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty much, I mean, look, the safe bet is to say the field, of course, because there are teams that can beat them. We've There's a team out there that did beat them just a few months back in the playoffs. So, yeah, you I mean, you want to see the field. You want to see the healthy Bucks, You want to see the healthy Nets. And you also want to see what happens at the deadline. I think the other team to mention is the Sixers, who I think is a really tough matchup for Boston. Um, but, yeah, they're atop the East, rightfully so. They've had their struggles as of late, and they still remain there. They showed last night, you know, Jason Tatum had a, had a great game, was hitting some tough shots. They started their two big lineup without Marcus Smart out there, slotted Derek White in, and really didn't miss a step. So they're not whole just yet, and when they are, we'll see a much better version of them. But, I mean, yeah, I like 29 to 1 odds a lot better than, you know, the other way around. Uh, but they're a great team. They're a force to be reckoned with, and, and they're only going to get better as the season goes on. Um, we got to talk America's team, the Sacramento Kings last night. A big blowout win over Orlando, very much in part to a franchise record 23 threes. Harrison Barnes with a season high 30. Uh, Kings right now sitting in the fifth spot with a record of 21 and 18. Eddie, your hometown Kings. Good story, good team. Which? Great, great story. Maybe even the best story in the league, but also a good team. And when they added Mike Brown, it was such a coaching upgrade for them. You just knew things were going to change for that franchise and that roster as well. And getting some bonus at the trade deadline is a little harder to implement, and they were already behind the eight ball when they did that. But with a full camp and a, a full season to get this right, they've shown, you know, they might get home court advantage in these playoffs. They're that good right now. Um, it's great for the city. It's great for that organization who, again, we've said this a bunch of times, longest playoff drought in the four major professional sports. You want to see that in one way or another. Um, and it looked like it might not have to be the play-in. So, you know, light the beam, all that cool stuff. But, but they look great. And when they shoot it like they shot it last night, they've done this a few times this season. They did it to the Nets. And everybody thought the sky was falling for the Nets. And that happened. They're really hard to beat. So... Um, it's a well put together roster and they have opportunity to add some more pieces if they feel like they want to. Yeah, I agree. I think this is the best story of the NBA so far. I think Sacramento needed this and it's just a good time right now in Sacramento. It's fun. It's positive. Uh, and they do have a very good team. I love Sabonis. I love Fox. I love the addition of Kevin Herter. Uh, Harrison Barnes is one of those guys that you know what you're going to get. He's going to be solid. He's going to do multiple things out there on the court. Uh, and they got a lot of young guys that can play, and they play the right way. And, and Mike Brown's got them playing extremely hard and, and unselfish. And it's fun to watch. And, and this, is a, this is definitely a feel-good story. I feel better about them being good. Do I think they're a contender? Eh. Probably not. But you know what? In their situation, I don't think it matters because this is a huge step forward for them. This is a bunch of progress that they've made. And it's been a long time coming for this franchise, for this city. And I'm just happy to see them doing well. And they are going to get into the playoffs. And maybe they get a good matchup and they can advance. But uh, for now, you know, they're exceeding everyone's expectations and they're playing extremely well. Yeah, I think the idea that they could perhaps shock a few people in the playoffs would be amazing. It would also add to what Mike Brown's been able to do this season. Um, and it's a year in which we're seeing a lot of great coaching, but it's never too early. Coach of the year, would you give it to Mike Brown, Chandler? Mm, he's up there. It's hard to go against him. <laughs> I, I, it's tough. I, I like J.B. Bickerstaff in Cleveland. I like Malone in Denver. Can Jock Bond get coach of the year for what he's done in that turnaround mm. there? There's a lot of guys that are doing a good job, but Mike Brown is right there with the transition he's made with just the complete culture change, the way they have. You see the clips of him, you know, interacting with the players. It, it, it's fun and it's a happy time and it's positive. And, and that has a lot to do with 
Mike Brown's presence there. But uh, you could go one of many ways. But yeah, he's in there. Yeah, Willie Are Green's up there too. Yeah. It's, it's oh, gonna it's gonna be a yeah. tough race. I mean, he's deserving as well. But if Willie Green gets the one seed, the two seed, it's gonna be hard to argue against that. Jock Vaughn, like you mentioned, for all the reasons we've talked about before. Um, I like the Malone mention as well. You know, this is a team that that is supposed to be good, but you get credit for that as as well. You get credit for making your team even better, and they're already supposed to be good. Uh, it's a tight race, Joe Mazzula. We, I was actually talking to Shams about this the other day, and we thought it might be a two-guy race, but, you know, Mike Brown is right there, and, and deservingly so, Mike and Brown I'm happy he's getting run. this. I'm happy he's that? getting this kind of like second life in the NBA as he sat back as an assistant. Remember, his Lakers tenure ended, and, and people were not excited about that. Obviously, he had the Cavs run, and people were wondering if he could win the big game and all that stuff. So his time with the Warriors obviously worked out well for him. And now he's getting his chance, and he's showing what he is. He's one of the better coaches in the league. We did text about that the other day, Eddie, and I kind of slept on Mike Brown, but that's one of the best stories in the league for sure. So when you look at Willie Green, Jock Vaughn, Mike Brown, uh, Mike Malone, J.B. Bickerstaff, I mean, that's probably your top five right there when you look at Coach of the Year rankings as of now. I mean, it all makes sense because we're talking about any given team could take away either conference. And so I feel like given that, then there are a lot of coaches that are up for grabs as well. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, the latest on Kevin Durant from Shams and which Hornet is heating up the trade market when Run It Back returns. Run it back, yeah. Run it over. Run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it over. Run it back. Run it over. Welcome back. Time for Shams to make us all a little bit smarter. Uh, let's let's get started with Kevin Durant. I think that's the one everyone most wants to know about and the Nets. So what's the latest? It's an MCL sprain injury in that knee, and he's going to be out at least three to four weeks. The good news uh, for the Nets is that this MCL sprain is not as severe as it was last season. And the goal, and there's optimism around the team, that he will be able to play before the All-Star break, maybe in a few games, and then play in the game itself in Salt Lake City. Uh, But this is a guy that's been super durable this year. He's only missed one game all season. So this is a tough time for the Nets to be without him. But I think the, the one saving grace is they're in a much better position right now to be without him than they were last year they're 14 and 1 in their last 15 18 and 2 in their last 20 Kyrie Irving is full-time not part-time uh they've got some more depth some more talent on this team so uh the good there's there is good news for the Nets but they'll be without KD for at least the next three to four weeks and it does feel like different right yeah I went to see Kevin yesterday and he was in good spirits and I, I think Shams is dead on you know the severity is a lot less than last year and that's giving a lot of optimism to both him and the team going forward. He's going to take some time to get it right and, and, and be reevaluated in two weeks, like everybody said. But he's feeling good about everything. I, I know, you know, last year it was pretty scary. It, you know, he's left the arena on crutches and it was a whole thing. And, um, you know, everybody's feeling better on the team now. And, yeah, they got the schedule breaks a little bit well for them. It's unfortunate – he probably won't be playing in the Warriors game. That's the, exactly two weeks on the dot, and that makes it three years now. He has not played mm. in that arena with fans since he's left. Um, and, you know, that's unfortunate, but, you know, maybe he'll make the trip. Who knows? Yeah, this is just – this is bad timing for, for him and for Brooklyn because they finally – they're hitting their stride. They're playing so well, but – if I'm Brooklyn, this is big picture. They've showed that they can compete. They they have other guys to kind of tread water while he's out. But take as much time as you need. Heal that knee up and, and come back with the month, two months, whatever whatever you need and be 100% in the playoffs. And, and this is a team that nobody wants to see with a healthy KD. Yeah, I, I suppose it's a completely different vibe than it was this time last year. Shams, what else you got for us? So one guy to monitor on the trade market is Jalen McDaniels, forward with the Hornets, six foot nine wing that can shoot threes, can defend multiple positions, averaging almost 11 points a game this season, making over one three a game, five rebounds, two assists per game as well. Uh, and I'm told one team to monitor is the Phoenix Suns. They've been a team that has expressed interest in Jalen McDaniels, has pursued potential avenues to go get him in in multiple different scenarios with Jay Crowder. Could it be a third team? Uh, but that's a guy that is starting to get interest on the market. He will be an unrestricted free agent in July. There's going to be interest in him for sure as a two-way wing player. Um, but we'll see. The Hornets, of course, would want him to be a part of their future. But the Suns have tried to see if there's an avenue for them to go get him. 
I love it. So the breadcrumbs begin for the trade, Shams. It's going to get really good. Only 30 days left. Shams, we'll see you tomorrow bright and early. Thank you, as always. Guys are obviously sticking around because it's time for that man. Has a family. Yesterday, we showed you some great dunks. Today, uh, the even more dis disrespectful blocks and ankle breakers. Here we go. Derek White. Mm. Is he I, I like the attempt here on Spencer, <laughs> too. I, I like the fact that he tried to go up and, and throw this down, Ooh. but that, that's a great defensive play by Derek White. Lovely. Yeah, it is. Spence kind of lost it. You see the, the ball kind of rolled out. Saying, I'm shocked to see him attempt this dunk as well, but <laughs> yo, great great block by Derek White. Good, good stuff, my guy. I can't I tell Derek White's... Like, I love when someone like Derek White, who doesn't block many shots, is like kind of talks trash after yes. like he's offended for like he's offended for trying on him. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. I feel like it, it was a very kind of un Derek White Derek White moment, and I loved it so much. Okay, I like it. Um, Robert will. Yeah, I mean, I don't. This is stupid. <laughs> Robert Williams with the block on Malachi. And I believe it was after this game where Robert Williams was like, why would you even attempt that? You know I'm going to do that. So and you know what? He should get a block. He should get a rebound. He should get an assist <laughs> and two points all in one play. Oh, shut up, Chandler. Looks like, <laughs> looks like me and, and Chandler win. playing basketball. And the win, Michelle. Well, they got the win, okay? So you get, you get one of your dreams. <laughs> yeah, it was... Um, <laughs> You know, that's at the arc, though, dude. Let the man have a three. Just, although it was close, <laughs> at that point, it would have tied the game, so maybe not. <laughs> this is like a, this is no like easy blocking buckets. the nephew, and this is like blocking the nephew in the driveway here. It was such a blade right? right in his face. I love that Pop is just unfazed in the back, like it's whatever. That's, right, that is what it is. Things happen. Uh, <laughs> Benedict Matherin. Okay, let me see the drop here. Oh, well. Oh. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, I think that's embarrassing. No, the delayed <laughs> fall is almost worse. Like, like he's trying to catch himself, and up. Oh. <laughs> it's like his mind. Like, like, you never want to touch the earth on a nice though. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's <laughs> weird. Slow mo. Look how he like he like pats the ground. He, he fell all the way on his back. Like that's that's pretty bad. Don't let a rookie what? do that to you. Even a great rookie like Benny. <laughs> I mean, that is. Yeah, it's like you want his he, body. What he did is kind of just like a straight line drive here. He got off balance, but yeah, you yeah. can't fall like that. Well, I don't think he, I Yikes. mean, his body's definitely trying not to. That's that's fair. Uh, Jamal Murray. I love that we're talking good Jamal Murray highlights. This is what I've been waiting to see. Wow, this is good God. Oh. I'm exhausted. That's a lot of dribbles to, to drop uh, off old Neto. Like, I, I, can I give Neto a little bit of credit for yes, this Yes, you defense? can. I think you should. Yeah. yeah like, to be honest, yeah. that's good. That's a lot. That's good, def that's good defense, and that's the shot that you want to give up if you're Cleveland, but that's just right. classic good D, better O. <laughs> yeah, he actually he almost blocked the jumper. It was just really weird, but yeah. I mean, nice fancy dribbling, I guess. Nice, fancy dribbling. Oh, we should get a new graphic. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we should call the segment. <laughs> nice. It's a new segment called Nice, Fancy Dribbling. People will be talking about it everywhere. Oh, we're taking like a quick that. break. So, sponsors for that uh, one. <laughs> I mean, the, the biggest sponsors. Um, this story, when we come back, there's a EuroLeague official who was suspended for four games for a bad call. Now we're doing it. Now we're doing it when we return. Run it back, run it over. Run it back, yeah, run it over. Run it back, run it over. I'm not really. Uh, I mean, I watch some NBA games, uh, but I, I was, you know, I watch more EuroLeague than NBA. But if it's a really good game and it's on TV, uh, I'll watch it. Dun dun dun! Controversy here, Chandler. He watches more EuroLeague than NBA. How does that make you feel? Like, does he like? The, <laughs> does he really like? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm sure he's got friends over there. I'm sure he has teams he pulls for over there. But listen, being in the NBA is a full-time job, and every player has league pass. I'll tell you right now, every player gets free league pass with a with the username and login. It, it'd be silly to not watch basketball. It's free scouting. It's 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 free basketball that you're going to end up playing all these teams. Uh, does he watch your league? I'm sure he does. But if 
that's the, I, that's something that I could nitpick and say that's stunting his growth as a, as a professional. And my coaches all my career would say, watch as much as you can. Obviously, they're going to break down film in the locker room. They're going to show you everything you need to know. But why not study your peers? Why not watch all the other teams? Why not see what you can see on a, on a, on a random Tuesday night? Of, you know what I mean? Like, it, it can only help you watching NBA games. So if he's not watching, I'd highly recommend that he does because it can't hurt. And watch both. Stay up and watch the EuroLeague. But also, I would, I would watch as much NBA games as you can. I'll say this. If Luca's not watching his scout, and not watching league pads, it, it almost explains the defense. Uh, I'll just say that much. I, so in that sense, I almost believe him, but he's surely lying. Like, what are we talking about right now? Surely. <laughs> well, you know, it's probably chalk it up to time zones. Like, he's sitting around, you know, at noonish, probably a yearly game on. I'm just going to – maybe it's just that. Maybe that's what he – I don't know. I'm trying to give him excuses. So, But there have been players yeah. that I think have Polite admitted like they don't watch. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I'm going to come up with something. Um, but the EuroLeague also giving us a story right now that I kind of love. Okay, so there was an official over there that missed a call and was reportedly suspended four games. So he missed the fact that Mirtich stepped out of bounds. Then he hits a buzzer beating three. And then that sends the thing into overtime. Oh, my gosh, Chandler. Can you imagine a world? Should we adopt this policy? And we've had a couple of games in the last week that had some questionable calls at the end that were then <laughs> two minute reported. So what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I love it. I, I think four games is, is a little steep. Uh, I'm not <laughs> sure like the rules here. I'm not sure if there's a replay. I'm not sure the EuroLeague rules, but I mean, yeah, why not hold the, the refs to the same accountability that, that the players are? It's only going to make the game better and more fair and, and even if, if the refs are on it and, and, and have those high standards that the players do. So uh, I think it's fair. I don't think it'll ever really happen in four games. Like I said, it seems a little intense, um, but yeah, why not? I feel like the, 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 the refs missed calls should be public. The refs should also have some consequences for when they make mistakes just as players do. Yeah, I'm all for accountability <laughs> yeah. from the referees. Like, let's please introduce something that does that. The two-minute uh, review doesn't do that at all. It really just uh -huh. frustrates people. I I'm with Chandler. Like, suspending is a little dramatic. I think, like, a public shame or what whatever. Like, fine? just give me... Just give me one of those guys' uh, Instagram. Like, that that would do the job, truth be told, because he would hear so much from these fans that he might want to get the call right next time. But, I mean, I think implementing something like this, I'd imagine there is something similar to this that isn't public. Maybe they're not getting suspended, but I'm sure they're being remanded in some way. Mm -hmm. But I love, like, the public version of this and the accountability of that. So, yeah, let's do something. We've seen some bad calls as of late. Let, let's yeah, we let's have. We might as well let them get the consequences. Right yeah, well, because here's the deal. Four games feels like somebody lost money and took it personally. But we had these calls that just happened. And in the two-minute reports, basically the Bulls were on the, <laughs> the bad end of these. How about this? If the two-minute report comes out the next morning, and in fact the call was wrong, shouldn't a fine, it doesn't have to be a monster fine. I know they're not making the same as the players, but some sort of a punishment be in place. Otherwise, again, I've said it a million times, what is the point of the report? Yeah, no, it's, exactly. it's tough. And especially a play like that, Jared Allen traveled. Who do you blame? Yeah. They, they all they all missed it. So like, do you point all out three. one of the refs that was closer? All do all of them get reprimanded? Y'all get uh, fined. It's tough. There's a lot of gray area here. I think something should happen. I, I mean, four games is is a little bit much, but some some sort of a fine. If you don't do your job right or you make a big mistake, then what is the punishment? There's none. I agree. Yes, we're fixing the league one day at a time. Uh, time for a little you buying that. Rory Marketing, step on up, averaging 31 a game. Over his last 10, he's shooting 50, 40, 90. Only NBA player with at least 70 dunks and 73s this season. Whew. Chandler, I mean, you're buying him as the face of the Utah Jazz franchise, right? Yeah, I'm maybe buying him as the face of this franchise with the future <laughs> that they have. Um, look, he's having a great year. He's got so much size. He's put on a lot of strength. He's efficient from, from the field. He's efficient from three. Uh, he's having a career year, and I hope he continues to do this. And this isn't just flash in the pan. He has this, you know, one spectacular season. 
and we don't hear from him again. And he bounced around a little bit, but I think this kid is a good dude. I think he works extremely hard. I think he's got the size and the talent to be a very good player for a really, really long time. Uh, a number one guy on a good team, probably not, but I think he's a great two or three option on a very good team. God, yeah, I'm much. with Chandler. You know, I I think I think their ideal is to have a player that's better than him to really steer the ship. But he's he's shown out and he's shown why he was drafted in the lottery and was is touted as a, as a great prospect. Um, you know, the versatility and he's such a modern big. He's a legit seven feet and like Chandler mentioned, he's put on some some muscle and and become a bigger, stronger player. 73, 70 dunks. It seems really arbitrary, but it does accurately depict like his ability to hit both of those uh, situations on the on the offense. So, yeah, I don't know if he's the face of the team going forward. I think they would ideally have Victor Wembanyama or Scoo Henderson or Eamon Thompson or something like that, but he's definitely a foundational piece going forward for sure. And he's the prize of that trade, and, and they're going to go forward with that. Uh, we're going to talk some Lakers, but not who they should go get. Who they already have. Oh, changing it up a little, are we? Yes, we are. Uh, Thomas Bryant, he's doing some things for them with AD out. He's averaging 21 on 72% shooting, 14 rebounds a game. Um, that was during that five-game win streak, of course, that just snapped. But entering his fifth NBA season, he's got a base salary of, right now of about 2.1 and will be an unrestricted free agent after the season. Eddie, are you buying the idea of the Lakers extending his contract? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, before Thomas Bryant tore his ACL in Washington, he was on the way to a pretty big contract. And, you know, things just break that way. And he missed almost a complete season after that as well. And they kind of he kind of fell in their lap. I believe they had him earlier in his career and then let him go and watched him flourish, become a better player. And now they've got him back. Um, they might get him on a good contract now that he's went through the stuff with the knee. But he's a great modern big. And he's a really good compliment to Anthony Davis. You obviously would like to see them more together when AD comes back, but he can pop out, he can hit a three, he can protect the rim. He's obviously meshed with LeBron. You you need to keep him on that team. You you don't have too much youth over there. So him at only 25 years old, you want to hold on to him. Yeah, I agree. He's he's kind of that only bright spot of a future piece that they can you know manage to keep right now and extend him for a, a team friendly deal. I I would do it. Like like we just said, he's he's a modern big. He's got great size. He's all over the offensive glass. He doesn't shoot the ball. He just takes great shots. He finishes. He blocks shots. Uh, the fact that he's averaging close to 13 and 7 and 20 plus 20, 21 minutes, uh, he's got potential. And then he's got size. He's got length. And like Eddie said, he's 25 years old. And the future of this Lakers team isn't really promising. So if you can lock up this kid and at least have that piece going forward, why not? I mean, we just all but guaranteed the Lakers are now going to let him go. So you're welcome, everyone. Uh, next up, NBA teams. This is the hottest topic of the season so far because it's points, points, points. There are so many points being scored on a nightly basis. Uh, 113 points a game right now is the average. That's on pace to be the most in 50, over 50 years, actually. We've seen 14 50-point performances and over 75 40 pieces. Uh, Chandler, are you buying that the surge is good for the league? Yeah, I love it. I think it's great for the league. I think it's great for the fans. And as much as defense wins championships and how important defense is, which is true, that's not what people go to games for. That's, people don't want to go see a, a 93 to 87 finish. They want to see guys score 50, 60, 70 points, which you know players are providing this year. And, and the three-point shooting is out of control. Teams are shooting it at a high clip. Guys are getting to the free throw line. Pace is an offensive pace is super fast. Uh, and, and it makes just the game more exciting. There's so many talented players that are scoring in so many different ways. That layup right there by Luca, like just every everything that's <laughs> happening offensively. Should some old heads, you know, are gonna be kind of like rolling their eyes and wish there was more defense, and guys diving <laughs> on the floor. Yeah, for sure. And there's still gonna be that. But I think it's awesome. I think it's fun. And I think it's really exciting. And like Jalen Brunson last night, 44 points. And we're kind of just like blazed right over it. Yeah, we did. 44 points. That, I mean, it's, it's insane what's happening. And it's fun to watch. Yeah, I think it's great for the league. I mean, if you look at all the rule changes they've made in the last 20, 30 years, they're all to make 
put more offense on the court. And, and this is exactly what they want. And, and like Chandler said, the players are, are growing exceptionally well as, as well. They've added different elements to the game with the sidestep three and then how the one-legged three and all this new footwork. It's just ways to get space and shoot jumpers and make them. You know, back when I was growing up, if you dribbled into a three, you, you'd likely get pulled and sat next to your coach. Uh, but now that's, that's a modern shot. So We want Charles Oakley back, apparently. <laughs> I mean... I would love Charles Oakley to play an NBA game today. But hey, I mean, this is exactly what the league wants. We've officially reached the time, Sam, back when I was growing up, huh? Yeah, That's we have. Uh, Shoot, I've been there. You hate to see it. <laughs> we're we're to see there. It, you know. we're that, where are our uncles? Yes. We're officially our uncles now. I, look, so, I work with Sean but, Elliott every Spurs game, and he is the biggest back in my day guy. Like, <laughs> But it's hard yeah. to well, – I don't want to not see scoring. Look – if you allow them to just be a little more physical so that we can get the Charlie Charles Oakley esque of it, but then I also love the point. So figure that out. Make that work. How? Yeah, I don't know. Good balance. <laughs> good plan. Good plan. Make it, make it work. You guys figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> but let, here's the thing. The playoffs is a whole different animal, right? Do we expect it to slow down a little bit once we get to that part? I mean, yeah, I think I think it's hard to do that four to seven times against the same exact <laughs> team. Uh, I think the scoring will go down a little bit, but I, I still think guys are so talented now. Guys are so crafty and creative the way they can score. They're still going to find ways to put up gaudy numbers, even in a playoff series. And uh, I think they'll crack down. I think the game will be expanded. I think there'll be longer possessions in the playoffs, but uh, – I don't think guys are going to shoot less threes. I don't think guys are going to make less shots. I, I just think maybe they'll tighten up defensively and kind of slow the game down a bit. But I still look for big games in the playoffs. Same Z's, same Z's. Uh, taking a quick break here. When we come back, we lost our parlay, but it's more about how we played the game when running back returns. Running back, run it all. Running back, yeah, yeah. Run it all, run it back, run it all, run it back. Everyday wins make your day so much better. That's why FanDuel Casino has a daily free-to-play game. Reward Machine is a free game that gives players the chance to win up to $2,000 in casino bonus every day. FanDuel's Reward Machine has already given away over $10 million in prizes and has over 250,000 winners. To get in on the action, all you have to do is log in daily and spin for a free chance at rewards. FanDuel wants you to win. Play Reward Machine for a free chance at everyday wins only on FanDuel Casino. Well, we have to be accountable for our mistakes, and we did have a three-legged par three-leg it what parlay yesterday, Eddie. As the sole oh. big fat L, would you like to explain yourself? <sighs> well, I made the mistake <laughs> of betting on anything successful happening for the Lakers, and I paid dearly <laughs> for it. So dearly, I indeed. own that. I don't. Russ led the team in scoring, which is absolutely <laughs> perfect because I wanted him to pass the ball, but. <laughs> It's a new day and a new parlay and a new chance for Michelle maybe to finally miss on one. So it's not just By us. the way, I love that we're supposed to be a team, but we're just really – I mean, I've been turning on you guys since the beginning because now we're just waiting to see when I get one wrong, which is not the point of a three-leg parlay. <laughs> and Chandler, Chandler, as close as you can get on that one. So that was nice. Yes. I've been sneaky hot. I've been sneaky hot lately. <laughs> Just clip that, guys. We're going to play that as like a something a promo later on. All right, so, Eddie, you got another shot. Go. All right. I tried this bet <laughs> earlier in the season and missed, but I'm going Donovan Mitchell over 29 and a half points against his former Ooh. team, the Utah Jazz. This time it's actually in Utah. So like I'm it. expecting Donnie to shoot 30 shots, not just score 30 points, uh, which, of course, means he'll score 29 on the dot and we'll miss again. <laughs> He sat the fourth quarter last time. I can't believe it broke the way it did, but I'm going Donovan Mitchell over tonight. I like okay. that one. I, like, I, like, I do, too. I like that one. Yeah, I think he goes nuts. Uh, I like the Suns plus 11 and a half at the Warriors. Listen, it's not like the Warriors are exactly healthy either. 11 and a half is a lot of points, and the Suns do have guys that will play that kind of carry the load to an 11-point loss. I don't care. Okay. Just don't lose by but Chandler. What if Steph plays tonight, which is a rumor? Are you going to be worried? Then I'm going to send a text to Danny, and I'm going to switch up my pick before it's a fall. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we reserve that we'll right. Screen, we'll have a screenshot tomorrow if that is the case. 
just cross it out. Yeah, okay. Take it off the Mine books. is super easy. Mine's easy. Mine's just the OKC and the Heat game. Um, I think Oklahoma City plus four and a half. I don't know. I just I have faith that they that's not that big of a of an ordeal to overcome. I think they would be all right. But um, <laughs> yeah, if Steph does play. Well, I don't know what our cutoff is. Do we have our cutoff? No, it's there. It is. It's in writing, Chandler. You're screwed. Twenty, I gotta 20 say, bucks. I'm when you not even trying to hate. I l- hate Thunder <laughs> plus five and a half. You hate what? I hate Thunder. I think the Thunder get wild tonight in Miami. All right. So you heard that, America. Double down on my leg of the parlay. We will be back. <laughs> <laughs>